Hello and welcome to Infinity. Let's have a look at this picture here. It's all very well, but it's just a little bit too static. Um, everything's in focus and the car's not moving, it's like it's parked there. So let's add a bit more depth to it by making it blur off as we go backwards and make the car move a bit. To do that, we're going to separate out the car. So we'll select the use the selection brush with snap to edges set, and then we'll just paint around the edge of this. Oops, let's Alt and paint to get rid of the stuff that jumped too fast there. There we go. There we go. That's got it. Uh, a little bit more up there. There we go. Then we'll use Refine to tidy up the edges. Use the Refine dialog. Uh, we can start it pretty well by itself. And we'll add a little bit of feather so it blends nicely into the background when we blend the two things together. So apply that. Then I'll do a Control C and Control V, which is copy and paste, which sets that into a layer by itself. We can deselect that. There we go. Let's have a look at it. Turn off the bottom layer. There we go. Here's the car by itself. We'll turn that off so we just got the whole thing here at the moment. And we'll select the bottom layer. And uh, we now want a blur going backwards. A way to do that could be to choose a Gaussian blur and put a gradient mask on it. But a quicker way to do that is using the depth of field filter. We start off with this with a circular field but what we want is a one here called tilt and shift which gives us zones here so the middle zone is going to be clear if it be sharp then there's going to be a a fade a gradient here and then everything blurred beyond that. So we don't want the bottom bit, we just want the this down here, so this is going to be sharp from the bottom here. Then we'll lift this one up to keep everything here in focus. And everything up beyond here. Oops, I need to bring that back down again. Let's bring that back down here. There we go, that's a better way to do it. We can't see what's in focus because we haven't turned up the radius. Something to look at this here. If we turn the radius all the way up, notice the look what's happened around the edges here. That's because we need to click the Preserve Alpha to say, don't do that at the edge of the photograph, please. Blur is too much at the moment, so let's just turn it down until we've got sort of some sort of realistic blurring into the distance. Uh, kind of like so, looking at the edge of this here, like you can see the blur there quite well. Meanwhile, we're keeping this. Maybe we'll bring this down just a little bit more. There we go. So this is all quite clear and readable. But we've got a, a blur off. The vibrance and clarity we won't bother about at the moment. So there, that's depth given to it. So it acts like the lens has got a you know, a moderate, you know, maybe sort of F7 or something like that. And But now we want to treat the background here and we're going to put onto this a motion blur here. So this then is going to work on this car. <coughs> so again let's just click preserve alpha to stop any funny edge effects and we turn this up we get more and more blur we could even type in a bigger number here, so if you typed in 500, we get ooh, far too much. But we need a fair amount here to show that the car really is travelling. Yeah, maybe somewhere up, up about up there, that's about it. Then we can set the rotation. This goes in snaps, so we want it sort of down here a little bit. So we can change that to 190. There we go, that's forced it pointed down a bit, which is about the angle of the car. 
So there we go. That was quick and easy. Um, five minutes, we put a blur going backwards and a bit of a blur going sideways and we brought the picture to life. Hope you enjoyed that one and thank you very much for watching.